Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tosh Talks. If you notice something different from the previous Tosh Talks show, well, it's been a while, hasn't it? I've been away, I've been around the world like three or four times, but still with Book Soup. I'm sort of a agent for Book Soup. I'm the book buyer for Book Soup, but I'm the agent for Book Soup as well. I sort of share or spread Book Soup's uh, taste, aesthetic to the whole world, really. That's what I do. And now I'm here at my secret headquarters, uh, shooting our first Tosh Talks in, the, in a new location. I'm still with Book Soup at this new location. Uh, actually, I'm on the run. I have some people after me, but uh, that's another story. But uh, I just want to talk about some uh, books. And since I am on the run, as they say, um, there's a writer by the name of Donald Westlake. And he wrote a particular series of books called the Parker Novels, or the Parker Series, under the name of Richard Stark. And these are the books here. Looks beautiful, right, if you put it on a bookcase. But they're meant to be read, read everywhere, on buses and bathtubs and uh, in strange places as well. And there's such titles by Richard Stark, like The Black Ice Score, The Rare Coin Score, like a series, you can tell already, right with the titles. The Seventh, not an interesting title, but a very good book. The first in the series, The Hunter. You may want to read this one first, I'll put this aside. The Man with the Getaway Face, about facial surgery to change your identity, a must rave criminal. The Mourner, and The Score. Now, the motif of these books uh, by Richard Stark is a character named Parker, who is a professional criminal. Now, how do you separate a professional criminal from, say, a, a sociopath criminal or just everyday criminal? <clears throat> Parker looks at his job as a job, and his job is being a criminal. And it's almost like a nine-to-five job where he just focuses on how to take money from a victim or institution or a bank or et cetera, et cetera. And to do this, he has to organize or be part of what they call a heist gang meaning there's like a, a, a gang of people, maybe <clears throat> six or seven people, and their job is basically to uh, rob something or a place or a location. And it's sort of like a family story. It's like how these people get together and organize and plan to take this money away from whatever institution. And um, the things that make it interesting is that the character of Parker is totally a pro. He looks at it very professional. It's almost like he's a, um, a art consultant or a, um, a doctor, a surgeon. He looks at it as almost like a surgeon to do a robbery. Everything has to be timed absolutely perfectly, and everybody in that gang has to be perfect. You can't make any mistakes. Now, of course, when you're dealing with people, in other words, human beings, Things happen. You know, one of the guys has a girlfriend and he starts bragging to his girlfriend that he's robbing a bank and she's working with somebody else. And, you know, there's all this double crossing type of stuff, which Parker never ever partakes, but he witnesses this, these, uh, these uh, horrible actions. So each novel is basically the same. There's no real big difference between the first novel to the last novel. I think there's 14 in the whole series. But it's written so well and the language is so great. And it's totally in a way like, not like, it is escape literature, but done in such a high, beautiful level. And of course, we all want to be professional criminals. Nobody on their right mind wants to be the goody good person. Nobody wants to stand for justice because it's kind of boring. Um, but when you're a criminal, a professional criminal, that says a lot. We admire our criminals. We have many criminals in the political world that we actually secretly admire. Uh, and we admire the uh, bank robber. We always seem to admire the bank robber. Terrible crime, people get hurt. But there's almost some type of weird respect for the bank robber. And uh, The Hunter by Richard Stark, a Parker novel, the first in the series. I recommend you read this. Since once you read it, you will love it. And I guarantee not only you will love it, you'll get the whole series. It's published by the University of Chicago, uh, and they did a fantastic job with design, as well as getting introductions for each uh, book from people like Lou, uh, Luke Sante, a fantastic writer, John Banville, 
and Dennis Lehan. Uh, you know, fantastic uh, mystery suspense writers, or uh, and Luke Sante, a great um, sort of anthropologist about uh, city life and crime life. Fantastic. Great book. Now, on a different subject matter, we have a little orange juice, but it's fresh made California made orange juice. Made from an orange cow this morning. Delicious. Okay, on a different subject matter, a book I'm very excited about, a book by, not by, but about Astrid Kircher. Now, Astrid Kircher was the cover. Astrid Kircher was the photographer in Hamburg in the very early 60s when the Beatles first came to Hamburg to do their series of, of, of club shows. Totally unknown at that time. Uh, this is the first time they've been outside the UK, as far as I know. But uh, Astrid uh, was there in the audience. She captured them on camera, black and white photographs. She ended up being close, almost getting married, to uh, Stuart Stucliffe, who was the, the lost beetle, or the secret beetle, or the fifth beetle. He is the one who was a painter, and eventually he chose a painting career, or to go into painting and music, so he left the Beatles in Hamburg. He was John Lennon's best friend and um, in the band, um, and he hooked up with Astrid. But anyway, Astrid brought to the Beatles uh, at that time uh, uh, French culture, appreciation of people like Judith Greco, uh, French films, French literature, and people like Lennon and McCartney and Harrison um, just totally absorbed this particular culture from this incredible German um, at the time, uh, but still a, a beauty. And um, this book is a catalog to a show that's at the University of uh, Liverpool. And it's, I believe, Books of the Story that carries this. Um, but it's a fantastic catalog and has an uh, introduction by Michael Bracewell, who is a friend of Brian Ferry as well as Morrissey. And um, Bracewell writes about the visual art world, but he also writes about the music world as well. And he wrote a great book on Roxy music, which I highly recommend. But meanwhile, there's an interview with Astrid in this book that's fascinating. Uh, interview with Claus Foreman, who um, was an a, a, a ex-boyfriend uh, of Astrid's and became very close to the Beatles during that time, too. And to this day, <coughs> he's close to the Beatles world. He actually did the cover for um, Revolver, the collage for the Revolver album. And Astrid is still, in this day, of being in the Beatles world. But uh, these photographs are beautiful and quite haunting. And, um, uh, she actually brought the first sort of Beatle haircut to the Beatles. Uh, before then, the Beatles had um, sort of 1950s Brill Cream hairdo, which I'm actually have right now. This is Brill Cream, and um, and she introduced them a whole new look, a, f a sort of French soft look, but still the hard leather thing, hard leather but soft hair. It's a beautiful combination, beautiful aesthetic, and very important aspect of Beatle history in this book. And a must for Beatles fans, but also anybody that's interested in pop culture or pop culture in general. Um, and Astrid Kircher is a very important figure, chain between the Beatles and art, photography, fashion, and Hamburg culture. A must book. And this is the first, I feel like it's a reunion of Tosh Talks. Um, I've been away for a while, been around the world, been doing things, seeing people serving as an agent for Book Soup, and I will see you next week. We're going to do this on a weekly basis. Goodbye, world.